Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Weekend Wrap, brought to you by Crowcast, of course. Lots to talk about. We had a bit of a fizzer uh, <laughs> out of free agency. There'll be plenty to discuss about that, I'm sure. And uh, all the trades coming up, we've got a few irons in the fire that we need to discuss, so let's crack right in, shall we? Good evening everyone and welcome to another edition of the Weekend Wrap brought to you by Crowcast of course. Um, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Maka, <laughs> I'm already speechless. I'm already well, speechless, great, mate. Bloody great start there, mate. Really good well, start. What are you yeah, doing? Actually, you, you, like, just, you, like, you, you were as good as you. Donald Trump then. Well, I'm probably good as Adam Kelly in a in a uh, in a negotiation for a, for a top line midfielder. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, seriously, uh, <laughs> I do like how Adam Kelly is a bloke, but seriously, the way he talks, he sounds he'd be much more suited to farmer wants a wife, I reckon. <laughs> Look, I don't think we can blame him entirely. He's only part of a committee, Macca. He's only part of a committee. No, no I'm not having to go at him personally, but. Um, just, I'll give you a quick synopsis on how I see the Kraut situation, and that's basically his manager, after the cocaine issue, uh, he, his manager said a little, little time after that that it hadn't devalued Kraut's value. Well, now, that's absolute bullshit for a start because uh, before well, the let, cocaine hey, issue... Let's just... Let's not get right into it straight away, Macca. <laughs> I'm going to rip right into him, but go on. Just hold your fire for a minute. Hold your fire. Oh, I know. You always like a scrap to break. I'm, just, I'm off and running. Yep. <laughs> uh, no Nikki tonight. Uh, she uh, had a prior engagement, so it's just me and Mac. Uh, some of you might think it's a good thing, and others not so much. Um, look, aside from the bread crouch deal, of course, there's um, uh, Jackson Haightley that we've got to get over the line. There might be one or two others. Uh, we've got Kyle Hardigan that... Um, we also got a free agency pick for uh, Rory Atkins that everyone's forgotten because it happened so long ago. Um, maybe one or two other things that we'll talk about. Uh, don't forget, uh, join us. If you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook, you can get amongst it on chat. Uh, join us on the Discord chat. Uh, if you are part of our Discord channel, get in amongst it. If you're not part of our channel, Matt, you can just go to our website, go to the live chat page on our website, the uh, audio streams there, the video streams there. And uh, you can access Discord straight from the website. I mean, what more could you want, mate? Well, and they're paying nothing. <laughs> well, some of them are because we love our patrons that are helping us. Um, well, that's true. Well, yeah, we, we don't, but we don't mind the freeloaders, though, mate. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, look, uh, we do appreciate everyone who's contributed uh, uh, to the Crowcast in the last uh, couple of years through Patreon. No, um, very seriously, we value them all, mate. We value yes. them all because they are good. They're really Absol- good. And uh, yeah, there wouldn't be a show without them. Absolutely. Buddy, is this ads on Spreaker now? What's going on there? They snuck that one in on me. Bloody hell, I'm going to have to have a look at that. <laughs> anyway, look. First up, Macca, let's talk about um, Mr. Crouch, shall we? Yes. Now, uh, you, well, you, you lead me and I'll, and I'll give you. All right. Well, let, let's look at the facts as we know them. The facts as we know them. So the facts as we know them was that uh, Brad Crouch was offered a, a contract um, either towards the end of last year or the beginning of this year. And... Um, that contract was rejected and then withdrawn. So it was rejected by Brad's management and then subsequently withdrawn by the Adelaide Crows um, List Management Committee. Correct. And uh, 
so that's step one. Step two, as a consequence of that, he was advised to um, explore free agency. And predominantly the reason given for that, and I think they've stuck with this reason all the way through, was that Brad was looking for a five-year deal and we weren't willing to give anything other than a three-year deal. So, totally correct. So, right, so, yep. Yep, so we told Brad to go and explore free agency, um, which he may or may not have done at the time. Uh, fast forward to the end of the year in free agency and a couple of suitors sprung up, uh, Geelong in particular, and also St Kilda uh, later on in the piece. Uh, I think Geelong's interest waned a little bit when Jeremy Cameron became available, although um, I don't know how they're going to go with that, and uh, we can talk about that a little later. Um, but St Kilda um, um, were, the, were the firmest uh, suitor for Brad, and all talk out of all camps was that um, the parties were trying to work out a win-win-win outcome. Now, yep. we're talking about a 26-year-old uh, midfielder, probably the eh, arguably the best midfielder in our team. His brother might have something to say about that, and Sloney on his day might have something to say about that. But certainly um, many would say that he's um, at least top two or three midfielder in our team. 26, struggled oh. to get onto the park until the last couple of years. These last couple of years, he's been far more consistently getting on the park. Um, he racks up possessions, uh, so he is a ball getter. And I think uh, the Crows were thinking, and a lot of us were thinking, that uh, band one compensation was on the table. Uh, and it should have uh, been. Well, we'll get, been. we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, let's just go through the chronology. So we all thought band one would be on the table. Alas... Uh, not only was band one not on the table, Mac, but band two wasn't on the table either. We ended up with band three compensation for Brad Crouch. Band three compensation. Then uh, I got is... reclassified back to band, to band two. The AFL did uh, announce band two later. Uh, my understanding is that it's band three, mate. It's a pick after our first, uh, our first second round pick. But. Uh... Yeah, I'm not really sure. It doesn't really matter which one it is because if it's band two, well, it's at the end, of the end of the first round yeah. and that just pushes the other one back. So you've got 22, matters, 23 either way. It matters a bit in the context of the uh, contract that St Kilda put to Brad because you would think that um, Brad would have been on, what, 550, 600 at the Crows? At the Crows, yeah, he was in that range. That's the range he was yeah. already in. So you would think that uh, as, as much as getting a longer-term deal was important, Brad, you would have thought he, he might have garnered a little bit more. And the reports are that he was offered a guaranteed 600000 over five years with some fairly easy triggers to get it up to around seven hundred k. Now, as a consequence, six hundred k apparently nets you ban three compensation in this AFL world. So, uh, well, and there's been a lot of unfortunate stuff around it. So, uh, but that's the chronology. That's they're the facts as we know it, Macca. What would you like well, to add to all of that? Okay. Well, let's go right back to the very beginning and when he the cocaine thing, because there's no doubt that, that devalued him. Because at that stage, he had uh, more than one suitor. He had uh, not only was Geelong was really hot on him at that mm. stage. Essendon were in the running as well. Port Adelaide would win the running as well. Well, Port, and they were, Port only wanted to offer him a three-year deal, so they were out because they no, didn't meet the criteria. Four by 650, mate. Four by 650. Okay. Well, that's still not that's fair. That, that's factual. Four by 650. Yeah. Uh, with, yeah, with an option for one. So, uh, okay. Then, but that was before the cocaine. Now, after the cocaine, Essen were gone, Port were gone, yeah. uh, Geelong... It sort of coincided with the same time as Jeremy Cameron becoming available. Yep. Uh, so they disappeared as well. And then yep. St Kilda thought, let's mop up here. And look, there's no doubt we've been had by St Kilda, in my opinion. Now, we did work with them. There's no doubt about that. I think mm -hmm. that our our amateur, amateurish uh, crew did try very hard. And the uh, 
Caroline Wilson said, and I believe her, that uh, they basically they were going to take Luke Dunstan and uh, give them a very good pick back for Luke Dunstan, and they would up the offer to Brad Crouch to get him into Category 2. Okay, Category 1, Band 1. But so many AFL clubs apparently complained and said this is what they're doing, and the AFL said you aren't doing this to St Kilda and to Adelaide. Although it seems to be all right for two metre Peter to be a salary dump uh, for the Gold Coast. But absolutely, so, uh, there's so much hypocrisy around what is and isn't acceptable around um, around compensation. And unfortunately, the AFL doesn't have enough integrity to separate the issues. The issue was that the the, the reason the club stepped in was not because. Uh, the Saints and Adelaide were going to do a deal on Dunstan. It was that the consequence of that deal was going to enable St Kilda to give Brad that was a contract that was sufficient to get us banned one. So it was the other teams. It wasn't the other teams worried about the salary dump. It was the other teams worried about us getting picked two, basically. Absolutely. Now they're two yeah. separate issues because had we had we finished I don't know fifth or whatever, then band one would have been you know pick six or seven. But because it's band two, uh, band one, and because it's therefore pick two, uh, that's what the clubs were arguing up about. I, I want to go back a step. You, you've mentioned the cocaine bust a couple of times, and um, my personal view is that it's relatively minor. Um, you know, he didn't he didn't cop any conviction from uh, from the legal authorities, um, and I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to bracket the next statement with a whole bunch of allegedly's, Macca. A whole bunch of allegedly's. Right. Allegedly, you're going to say something. Allegedly, I'm going to say something that may not be uh, true. <laughs> but my understanding is, and if you cast your mind back, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, Gold Coast um, uh, supposedly tabled Brad an offer um, at the end of last year for him to go up there on a reported, I think it was a reported 800,000 over five years. That's what my understanding was. And my understanding um, that may or may not be correct, um, and it's alleged, and who knows, I could be talking shit, but my understanding is that the AFL intervened in that uh, in that deal. That's that correct. Process. That is correct. On the basis, on the basis, and this is not a crack at Brad Crouch, or this is, I feel uncomfortable saying it, but it, in the context of what's going on, I think it needs to be at least explored. On the context that he may not be a good, in HR terms, cultural fit for the Gold Coast Suns. That well, they actually they did make, that statement was made. I thought that statement was made. I don't think it was made publicly, mate. I don't think you'll find that the AFL anywhere publicly said that the Gold Coast shouldn't. Uh, no, probably more coach. like yeah, yeah, probably more like a journo said it. Yeah, it's possible, and I'm not in their a opinion. In their opinion, I'm not a journo, and uh, this is not direct information, and I haven't checked sources, and I haven't done anything. So this is very, 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 very much um, a supposition and uh, an alleged comment and uh, could have no basis in truth whatsoever. However, however, if you take that into context, uh, if if there was a pre-existing issue with Brad's off-field behaviour, whatever it might be, uh, and we know that um, uh, Brad gets an automatic uh, strike as part of the AFL drug policy for his indiscretion at the end of this season. Do you think there might have been some sort of um, cumulative effect in play there, Macca? Allegedly, <laughs> everything <laughs> I'm about to say. <laughs> I have no doubt Adelaide wanted Brad Crouch out of the club because. That, I mean, not really football ability, not, not related to football ability. And I have heard little things which may or may not be right, 
and they allegedly are, but uh, that they they don't well. Certain people in the club allegedly don't think he fits in well with the club for where they want to go to in terms God of it's, it there. God, it's hard when you've got no PI insurance, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, but that, that, that is the word that they were, they were very keen to get rid of him in the sense, that is the word, let's put it that way. That's the word. Yeah. They, they, they were keen to get rid of him on the basis of a cultural fit uh, and that uh, they have deliberately kept underbidding what he wanted so that yep. he would look at, and and ask him to look around. So yep. you can't get much clearer than that that they would have liked him to move on. Yeah. And they also were being a bit opportunistic and uh, hoping that at the same time they could be able to get that pick two, which I think in with uh, the cocaine issue had never happened, I think we would have got. But we haven't. Uh, oh, I don't know whether we would have got it, Mac. I, I honestly don't know. I think that if we if that had not happened, the offers would have been high and it would have been a lot easier to do minor manipulations perhaps to get it up Could to the been. right figure. That yeah. wouldn't have brought attention from the uh, a, from the AFL. Yeah. That's only now, my opinion again. But... Yeah, sure. And look, again, I'll couch this in uh, the fact that we don't know. Um, strikes aren't made public. Um, and, no, they're not. Uh, I think the third strike might be. But I don't think the first two are, um, you know. But I, I'm, and I understand that Brad has durability issues, and um, his injury issues would be enough to make uh, clubs think twice, um, or to offer him a deal that had some performance clauses in there, or some, you know, gains per season clauses in there. Absolutely. Um, although you know Hawthorne took Jago Mira. Um, sight unseen and, and thought they'd get him right and you'd think that St Kilda are backing in their medical team to get Brad right or to make sure that his hamstrings don't go and his groins are okay um, but it just the reason I raise all of that is just because I'm very curious about the fact that St Kilda can essentially offer a, a, a contract to Brad that is similar in money guaranteed money than what he was on already at the Crows and um and yet, uh, and yet, it's it's sufficient. If you read the reports, it's it's got sufficient triggers in it, sufficient triggers in it to get it up to a salary that he finds acceptable, not only in in length of contract but also in dollar amount. So, you know, you could you could draw uh, lines, but or you could join the dots, Macca, and think that some of those triggers may were and again total. Alleged, not even alleged, because I'm just I'm just spitballing here. But you could imagine that maybe some of those triggers are related to off-field behaviour. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Because it, it, I think any club that would, would uh, take Brad Crouch on, be it St Kilda, Geelong, Essendon, Port, any or any of those, would have had such clauses in there. If we were taking Brad Crouch from another club after that incident, we'd have a trigger in there like that. We'd have yeah. clauses in there that protect the club. That's just natural. So, yeah. and that's why I, in my opinion, I do think there's no doubt that the cocaine issue knocked it down because those things became triggers rather than hardcore contract, and therefore that cost us, uh, in my opinion, uh, the ability to get, a, um, a, a, you know, um, the ball pick two. Put it that way, very bluntly. That's which is what we were after, and. All through the year, if you think about it, the, the media were very confident we would get it. Yeah, it was all the all the talk was that Adelaide will be getting they, they will be in the luxury position of getting picks one and two. But after the cocaine issue, uh, he was taught, he was talked down, particularly by Damien Barrett, as if he was a bag of shit. I mean, he couldn't play. Well, uh, Damien Barrett, Damien Barrett, we'll talk about Damien Barrett later. And I just need to apologise to people on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> Yet again, Macker, I forgot to turn on the video stream. So mm. bloody hell, but it's on now. Um, so you did you missed a little bit, uh, guys. But uh, if you want to uh, catch up on that bit, you can uh, listen to the audio stream. Um, Mac. So I think what we're concluding, what we're concluding, Macker, is that um, off-field um, behaviour has contributed to the um, 
to the contract that St Kilda were willing to um, put forward. Yes, um, no doubt about that. And that the AFL, the AFL have um, intervened at, on at least one occasion in order to manipulate um, what was otherwise a legal situation. Um, it had been discussed on trade radio. It had been discussed in other circles. What Adelaide and St Kilda were proposing to do with regards to the salary dump was utterly legal, utterly legal. Um, and well, yet Caroline AFL... Wilson then made that. Well, Caroline Wilson's the mouthpiece for the AFL, and she did say the AFL intervened, but uh, she also did say herself that she was surprised because, on the surface, it seemed okay. Well, there is nothing. It's been done before. It's been done before plenty of times. It's a legitimate list management strategy, legitimate strategy, and it's all because if if there was no Brad Crouch deal on the table, if if St Kilda were just looking to offload Luke Dunstan back home um, and willing to take a mid second rounder or a third rounder for him in order to get some salary off their books to chase maybe Adam Trelaw or something, the AFL wouldn't had done a bloody thing but because pick two was involved pick two which was legitimately and rightfully ours as the bottom finishing club in the 2020 AFL season it it the AFL decided that it would step in and manipulate its own system once again once well, again. and we are never we are we are the antichrist with them. There's no doubt about that. Uh, they see us as the antichrist. They, anything they can but, do to not help us, that that is what they are. They're all but about. Macker, it doesn't it, make yeah. any sense. It doesn't make any sense. You've you've got to have a look at the history of the Adelaide Crows and the AFL, right? Because the AF, the VFL were desperate, desperate to get an Adelaide team in the competition. Desperate. We no, provide forgot that, mate. We provide 50,000 bums on seats every second week. We provide cracker um, uh, TV ratings in dead time slots, like Sunday afternoons, right? We contribute so much to this competition. And this is the first year in our 21-year history, or 23 or 20, however bloody long it is now, 20-year history, that we've finished bottom. In all that time... We've strived to be competitive. We've strived to win games at all costs, even at our own detriment, right? Correct. So why is it, why is it that Adelaide, for whatever reason, continually seem to get the rough end of the stick from the AFL? We got the rough end of the stick with the Kurt Tippett situation where we didn't actually breach the salary cap and yet yet we got penalised harder than Essendon did for... Um, systemic drug, drug, cheating. drug cheating you know we, I, I swear to God I believe 100% that the reason we still get hauled over the coals and the reason why the club still basically um, backs off in, in the face of the AFL is because they still vet our board and until that finishes until that period finishes and we truly own our own club without AFL interference whatsoever, this is going to continue to happen. Well, it's certainly continuing to happen. There's no doubt about that. I mean, we're going to have a, there's going to be some salary dump situations this trade period. Absolutely. Have a look at Collingwood. Well, Collingwood are in all the strife in the world. They've got a, a, a grader in Trelaw. Yep. And I don't know what the personal circumstances are with Trelaw, but... I, they seem to be wanting to get rid of him. They only signed him a few months ago, and they yeah. want to get rid of him at all costs, at all costs. And they are prepared to dump him for uh, a, a relatively poor draft pick and pay some of his salary to get rid of him. Now, yeah. that that is it. I mean, that's that's even more pronounced than what we, we were talking about with uh, Luke Dunstan, uh, yeah. the, the the big fellow two meter Peter up at the Gold Coast. They own the Gold Coast. Yep. So they're going to they're going to do exactly the same thing with Team Eater Peter just to get him off their bloody books, yep. and you, you, that's legit. You, you mentioned Collingwood. Collingwood uh, are in salary cap crisis, uh, if you believe the reports, and yet last year 
in order to keep Brody Grundy away from Adelaide, because I, I can tell you right now, he wasn't far off coming back to Adelaide, and I said that to you last year. Um, factually correct. Yep, factually, factually correct. correct. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Cameron, my son. Um, they put him on a seven-year, $900,000 deal or whatever, and they just simply could not afford it, Macca. They couldn't afford no. it. They handed out that contract without the ability to be able to pay it. That's exactly right. And to me, that's draft tampering. That's tampering because you shouldn't be able to put yourself in so much salary cap debt unless you're able to cover it. Or, Macca, alternatively, you should be allowed to dump salary whenever you like, a.k.a. what St Kilda were trying to do with Dunstan. So the AFL are having yep. a bit each way here. On the one hand, they're quite happy to, to um, allow uh, Collingwood to write long-term, high-number deals on more than one player, Grundy and Trelaw in particular, and you can bet your life that DeGoy's looking for money. But on the other hand, they won't let teams leg- legitimately salary dump in order to manage their, their, um, their cap space. So which is it? Does it does it depend what bloody jumper you've got on? Clearly, it does. Well, it does. Absolutely, clearly, it does. There's no question about that. Just just uh, digressing off of that because I think we, that's an established fact. So and yeah, and that I don't think there are too many people in the world who genuinely think that there was anything wrong with what we were doing. No. Yeah. Except that it got us picked two, which no one liked. Hundred percent right. And the AFL took yeah. If that this is where they had the opportunity. I go back to the AFL criticism of them because they had the opportunity to show that they do have some balls and allow it to go through because other clubs do it. Yep. But because it was the VFL clubs, all of them squealing like stuck pigs, yep. and particularly Damien Barrett, the bastard, and, and they, all they did was they took they went the easy way out. They took the easy solution, which is said, no, we're not going to allow you to do that now. Yeah, I have no doubt if that was a Victorian club doing it, it would have gone through. It would have yeah. gone through. Well, if because it was that... bloody... <clears throat> Let, Let's see what happens with Sean Higgins uh, when North Melbourne trade him to Geelong. Let's see what happens there to Barrett's club. Now, Damien Barrett is the biggest spud in AFL journalism and the stuff that has been going on in AFL trade radio over the last uh, two weeks since free agency started is an absolute disgrace. And not only the stuff that's on Trade Radio, but the stuff that gets published on AFL's own website by accredited AFL media representatives, including Damien Barrett. Now, Damien Barrett has put up stupid sliding... He doesn't even know what sliding doors means, but he puts up stupid sliding doors um, digs at Adelaide about about the value of Brad Crouch. And then after the the fact, he, he has the gall to say that pick 23 might have been overs for Brad Crouch. I know, I know. I know. Now, it's a, he's I, a wicked man. I can, I can ignore dickheads in the media, right? I can ignore your Jay Clarks of the world that get on the turps, your, your robos who get on the turps and they bloody spin shit on Twitter and all the rest of it. But Damien Barrett is by... By matter of exposure, he's on Triple M, he's on Croc Meat, well, he's not on Triple M anymore, he's on Croc Media, he's on Channel 9, he's on bloody uh, on the AFL website, he does his own podcast with Hutchinson. He is the highest profile AFL media journalist, right? The highest profile. Now, who is calling him to account? Who's calling him to account? Nobody. Where was Nobody. where was and the article about the stupidity of Brisbane for paying so much for for um, Joe Danaher, who's paid fuck all in the last three years? How you could know, he have possibly been a category? Oh, how could he have been greater than category one? How could he possibly be he, thirteen games? Look, if you come, the, the AFL's got to have some brains here, some common sense. I mean, they they talk about dollars. You've also got to look at what you've got. You know. Uh, Third, he got fifteen games in three years. That's what he's paid. I mean, you can say you can say that's a salary reward to pay him that much just to get it through. Yeah. I mean, but that's okay. Let it sail through. 
and, yeah. and you know they get a nice big high pick. I, I don't have a problem. Cool. I don't have a problem with anyone having an opinion. We we have opinions on here, and like it or not, Mac, we're actually part of the bloody media, even though we're not accredited and we don't have any PI insurance, so everything we say is alleged. Um, however, that like it was reported earlier in the free agency period by Sam Edmund uh, that St Kilda were offering seven hundred by five. And I think he was dead set spot on the money. Reese Homfrey in, in the uh, Adelaide Advertiser also uh, heard uh, that Brad Crouch was getting 700 by 5 and even after the event, even after the event, insisted that what he was told was 700 by 5. Mm. I'm pretty comfortable that what St Kilda were going to offer was 700 by 5, which would have given us pick, uh, band 1. Until mm-hmm. until the AFL stamped on that salary dump deal with Dunstan, no, no doubt, no doubt. Just so, no. just let's go to a different aspect of that particular trade. Mm. Uh, the one thing: how do you think our boys read and uh, Farmer wants a wife? How do you think they went? Well, that was going to be my next little point. So, very good segue, Maka. Thank you. The, yep. the problem the problem I've got with the way the club dealt with all of this is that they a either should have known all of this because surely they don't live in a bubble or b if they didn't know all of this then they they really aren't acting as professionals like the the, the first thing the first thing that they did wrong in my opinion was to actually tell Brad publicly to explore free agency. That that was that was publicly known in March, April, whenever it was. Yeah, amateurish, now, yep. The thing with free agency is, Mac, that generally speaking, a club wants a player and a player might be looking around or open to deals, but if a club... Say, for example, Geelong wants Jeremy Cameron. They, they've had to offer him up, you know, 900 by a million years in order to entice him out of GWS. And even now, it I reckon it's 50-50 that he'll stay. But generally speaking, the club that wants the player has to pay overs in order to get the player out of the incumbent club. 100% but correct. This is the first free agency deal that I can think of where the player didn't care whether he was at Adelaide or not, Adelaide didn't care whether he was at Adelaide or not and, and in fact, only wanted him there under their own terms. Now, St Kilda were fine for Brad to come over and play, but only on their terms. It was lukewarm all the way around. St Kilda didn't go and approach Brad. and They hadn't been working on this deal for 12 months. You know, this this was a the, the least motivated free agency deal I have ever seen in my life. But the problem with the Adelaide Crows publicly declaring that Brad Crouch could explore free agency is it just removed all our leverage. Straight up removed well, all our leverage. Well, it's, a, it's certainly amateur hour in, in our um, list management team. There's no doubt about that. I, why? We, how did John Reid escape the, the review? I just don't know. Not, is it John Reid? Well, yeah. Um, look, so you've got a situation. It, just put yourself in the, in the shoes of the club. And let's, forget, let's not forget that Adam Kelly only came on board you know, not so long ago. So a lot of this might have already gone down or been in train by the time he stepped in, um, which is why I don't have as much angst for Kelly as, as some others. But if you've got a situation where Gold Coast have backed out of a deal uh, to get Crouch last year, for whatever reason, let's forget about the, the supposed reasons, and uh, you're left with a player that you you're lukewarm about and you're worried about his off-field and you're worried about his durability, etc., etc., etc. And you've put a, what you think is a decent offer to him, 600 over 3 or 650 over 3, whatever it was, and he's knocked it back. Don't you just stick fat on that deal? Don't you just say, well, look, this is the deal that's on the table. You know, you're a valued member of our team. The reason we're not giving out five years is because we've got ourselves into trouble for giving out long-term contracts over the last five years. So it's a change in policy for the club that we're not going to go over five over three years now. You know, plus Normal we've business got some people concerns. would do it. Yeah, professional business people would do it that way. Yeah. They'd, they'd, or, or, they'd you, or, you, 
Or you say, all right, well, how about we negotiate a trigger for a fourth? You know, and then you can negotiate the trigger. But at no stage do you go, well, shit, we don't actually know what you're worth, Brad. So why don't you get your manager to go out and canvas the other clubs? Because you're going to be a free, a restricted free agent this year. And if you get a deal that you're happy with, that's going to get us what we want in terms of compensation, then shit, we're happy to let you go. And Adam well, Kelly reckons they were playing poker, for God's sakes. I'd love yeah, to play poker in ra- the club. I was actually going to raise that particular point about the, about the poker and the bluff and all the rest of it because the way, you know... Well, that's the other operated, thing. I operated in high levels of business for a long time. And the one thing I learned is that if you're going to bluff somebody, you've got to have something to back it up. You just can't bluff and have an empty hand so that if they look, you've got nothing. And that's what they did. I I came out on Big Footy uh, a couple of days before the the deal went down. Uh, I think it might have been um, either Sunday or Monday. And... Because I'd spent some time thinking about it and I'd made some assumptions that uh, our blokes had half a brain. and Between them, lo- between them. Yeah, to me, logically, what was happening is that St Kilda had delayed lodging the paperwork until Sunday so that it overlapped the trade period so that they could do a pick swap or uh, a salary dump or whatever the hell they wanted to do on the Wednesday morning and then lodge the, comp- uh, lodge the Brad trade, uh, the Brad Crouch free agency paperwork in the afternoon and I couldn't see any other reason why A, the deal was uh, delayed until Sunday, late Sunday afternoon B, why the Crows didn't come out immediately and say pick or match, take it or match, because they were adamant that it was pick two or we match right, adamant Correct. Uh, so the only reason for me that the thing was dragging on Monday, Tuesday, and then uh, Wednesday was because they needed to get to trade period so that they could do whatever they needed to do at the back end to make the deal for Brad palatable for St Kilda and Adelaide. I well, was I heard absolutely Kelly the... gobsmacked. Well, I heard Kelly talking on the radio, and he was saying that uh, openly, he was saying that the reason they took so long is they were... Manning the phones, trying every other club to see if they could do something uh, because they had nothing up their sleeve. Um, but there was no interest anywhere in Brad. And at the end of the day, then they had to make a decision whether they did what they said they were going to do or whether they backed down and took the compensation. And the answer was why they took the compensation. And I think in the long run, I think it's the right decision. It's not the fair value, but it's the right decision because and- they would have had a player on their hands at a high figure well, we'll uh, for a long about, period of time. So we'll I talk think about that they've got... We'll yeah, they force themselves into that. Okay. Because they force themselves into it. Yes, they did. Um, but I, I, I was gobsmacked when they came out and didn't match by Wednesday. Well, not by... Oh, the you had to work out then. By, by the end of it, you knew match. that's what was going to happen. But I was gobsmacked that they hadn't been able to work a deal. And maybe, Macca, one of the reasons why the AFL stepped in is because in I can't think of any other free agency situation ever that's occurred in the AFL ever where the team that are losing the player are manning the phones trying to get a better deal. And this is what's occurred. Adelaide have treated this situation opportunistically. They've treated it like a trade situation, right? They've looked at it and gone, oh, well, we can get a free pick out of here. We can materialise a pick where one doesn't exist by trading Brad, but doing it under the auspices of the free agency uh, framework, we can get an extra pick. And so Adelaide have been disingenuous in the way that they've dealt with this. And they've been outsmarted because the AFL... As much as they like to get their hands in uh, dirty and amongst all these deals, the AFL wouldn't have taken very lightly to someone trying to play the system. And that's exactly what Adelaide tried to do. They tried to play the system. They treated it as a trade situation instead of a free agency situation. Under no circumstances should they have been canvassing other clubs to get a better deal because it should never have gotten to that. 
They should have, Adelaide should have been playing this straight all the way through. And the fact that they tried to be cute about it, and this has got Justin Reed's fingerprints all over it once again, right? The reason why the AFL got the shits on and pulled the band one compo from us, in my opinion, is because the Adelaide Crows tried to game the system. And the AFL specifically say that they keep their secret herbs and spices free agency compensation calculation a secret so that teams can't game the system. That's in print. That's in black and white print. And Adelaide tried to do it, and they weren't bloody smart enough. I do like the fact that they did have a crack at it, though, Pete. No, um, I, don't, in the I sec- don't. I don't. Well, it, it, look, they know we're soft for it. They are no worse off for it. So I mean, yes, and they, yes, they are. Yes, we are, Mac. Let's let's go. I, a couple of reasons I'm talking why we're worse off. Well, well I'm talking about after the crowd situation, we weren't going to get picked two. So I, they they figured they might get it this way. Listen, we're worse off for a couple of reasons. First of all, Adam Kelly comes out and says, "Oh, we tried to bluff." I mean, the idiot, idiot. You, you, you and I will go and play poker, Mac, and one of us will win and one of us will lose, and I'll probably lose, you know, because you're you're better at poker than me or vice versa or whatever. But at some stage, right. one of us will try to bluff the other, right? Now, at the end yes. of the game, at the end of the game, if we if we if we play poker every week, right? At the end of the game, do you think I'm going to stand up and go, "Oh, I tried to bluff you there, mate, but it didn't work"? Do you think I'm going to say that? Only a fool does. Adam Kelly has basically gone, you can't trust anything that the Adelaide Crows say because we might be bluffing, because that's what we do. Now, it might have been bloody obvious, but you don't come out and say it. You don't come out and say publicly, we tried to bluff St Kilda. But that's a different issue than what I was talking about. I was actually pleased that they had a crack at least trying to up it with the Luke Dunstan situation, even though the AFL interfered and stopped it. Now, this is, this is a, a different issue, is after the ball game is coming out and making a fool of yourself by saying, I blocked but I didn't work, but it didn't work. The problem is, Macker, if you're going to try and game a system, if you're going to try and play a system and use it to your advantage, you've got to do it surreptitiously, right? You've got to get it to the point where people think afterwards, oh, hang on a minute, do you know what I mean? You can't, you can't just brazenly walk up to the AFL, the keeper of the keys, and go, oh, you know, we want band two compensation, so we're going to do this salary dump deal with St Kilda in order for them to be able to pay Brad 720 so that we get band one. What do you think the AFL is going to do? What do you think they're going to do? You, you I, don't work on... it, I, I don't think it was done that way, though. No, it was just that... It was, do you think, do you think they, the AFL was, is stupid? No, I don't think that's stupid. But I don't think neither did we go into the AFL and say we're going to do a, a salary dump situation. There was that much talk and chatter going on uh, in terms of all the snoops sniffing around. And, and, the, and it was published so many times in the paper, the AFL will obviously come and ask the question. And then once they've asked the question, well, you, you know, the whole no, thing They didn't have apart. to answer the question because what would have happened is that Luke Dunson, the Luke Dunson deal would have gone down on Wednesday morning. And the, and the AFL would have looked at it because they've got to sign off on every trade maker, and they would have. Are you saying to you, you they looked to the? Are you really saying you think they looked to the papers? No, but what I'm saying is that if the Crows and St Kilda had lodged that paperwork on Wednesday morning for a trade for Luke Dunstan, the AFL would not have approved the trade. They would not have. All right, but so, you know, common sense said you would actually um, lodge it. The, and they, I think, on the Sunday, the Saints lodged their um, uh, the papers. The free agency, yes. Their yeah, free agency papers. Um, but I'm thinking, even at that stage when they look when they lodged the papers, the AFL had spoken to both clubs and said, "There's rumours that you're going to do this Luke Dunstan thing going around. Don't do it." And that's why it took so long. In, oh, yeah. uh, and, it was, and it was the very, very last of the uh, free agency offers yeah. to be lodged yeah. with the AFL. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, Macker, at the end of the day, it wouldn't have mattered. In fact, it might have ended up worse for us because St Kilda 
uh, like obviously the AFL got wind of it somehow, right? The, it was in the media. There was talk of a few different players and all the rest of it. But if even if the AFL hadn't got wind of it, if if that deal had been lodged on Wednesday morning, the AFL would have put two and two together and gone no deal. Simple as that. So, and then we would have been stuck. So, I think you're fine that. We played. We were too transparent. We were too naive in how we dealt with the whole situation. And the Look at his handling way... it. Huh? Look at his handling it. I mean, Reed, he's a bloody failure. I mean, he's, he's cocked up every deal he's done. Well, and the thing, like I said, this is the only free agency deal that I've ever heard of where the, the, the losing club is actually um, championing the deal. Right, the championing, trying to make the deal happen. Every other time, like GWS, isn't championing bloody um, Jeremy Cameron to go. You know, even even Dodora Essendon. <clears throat> you know, he he held up that deal last year and missed out on on a much better deal last year than this year. But he's still got to pick one out of Brisbane. You know, so very very naive for the club, and once again. We've tried to game the system. We've tried to be too cute. We've been too transparent in our dealings with Brad because we flagged in March or whenever it was that we didn't want him. Go and explore free agency. We didn't want him. And it's all snowballed from there. The biggest mistake that we made was not having a deal in front of Brad at the opening of free agency we needed to have a deal in front of Brad but we didn't have a deal there was no deal in front of Brad when free agency opened so right. what was Sin- what was St Kilda competing against nothing nobody absolutely nobody and then and they just knew that we I also knew we'd buckle because we had no other options well of course so because we didn't we'd made it known that and you know Brad's manager would the first thing Brad's manager would have said to, to St Kilda is look if you want to get this over the line, all you got to do is give us a five-year deal because the Crows are adamant they don't want to give us a five-year deal. Right? Look, so, come back to, but, but, see, doesn't it come back to this situation? I, I don't understand why it's at the, you know, before at, it's at this stage that, that Brad Kratz has wanted to go. Uh, sorry, they wanted Brad to go. Right through the whole season, they wanted, they wanted Brad to go, really, didn't they? So why yeah, didn't they? Why didn't they last year uh, get Brad? I mean, Brad, Brad was asking ridiculous figures, but he could have landed a, a very good, very, very good contract last year. Oh, absolutely, and we would have hundred percent. And you know, and, and why wouldn't we have really been on his side to, to go? Mm. Um, so just we, quickly, we, would have got, we would have we would have got a first round and second round for him last year. Yeah, just quickly, Tim on Facebook. Sorry, it was my bad, mate. We uh, I forgot to flick the switch on Facebook and YouTube at the start, so you missed uh, the start of it when we did talk about the uh, cocaine situation. Um, so if you want to... Um, I might see if I can tack on the audio onto the uh, video upload afterwards, um, but if you want to have a listen to the audio, um, you can have a listen to it uh, afterwards. I'll, I'll post it in a tweet. But look... Mac, all that aside, the last the last question, I guess, is whether we should have matched or whether we should have accepted the compensation. Uh, I I think that once we got ourselves into the situation that we did, we had to take the pick twenty three, um, because we could have kept Brad, but then uh, we would have had him on our books. But nobody else was interested in dealing with him, so with that, they canvassed the phones on that for about four days. And nobody was interested. So he, he was going to be an Adelaide player. And for whatever the reason is, that, and we we spoke about it before, they definitely wanted him out the door. Uh, I obviously didn't think for what, for some reason or other, whether it was the cocaine, whether it was something else, that, that he wasn't good for the club and they wanted him out. There's no doubt about that. So that, that meant left, they only had one option left, which was to match, uh, not to match, but to not match and take pick 23. Not what we wanted, but it's done. And... Uh, uh, I think we've got to say, rule the line and say that's in the Brad Crouch deal. Another read botched up deal, but move on. Well, I'm of a different view. I think we needed to match. I really do. Because you don't sell an asset 
Macca, you don't sell your house if it goes for, you know, under the reserve. If it gets passed in, you don't sell your house. Now, it's fair to say that we may, for whatever reason, naively over overstated Brad's value in the market, um, <clears throat> which seems difficult to believe considering we were privy to everything that was going on. But, but to me... You don't get you don't get rid of an asset, and Brad is an asset, irrespective of how this has all turned out, for massive unders, and I, I just can't having having come out publicly and said you know pick two or match, um, and given that we would have only had to have matched St Kilda's deal, which would have been six hundred and something plus triggers, which was really only what we already had anyway, and given that we still would have had the opportunity to trade for Brad down the track um, as a contractor player. Um, my personal view is that we should have we should have matched. Well, we differ on that one, and we'll never know. We'll never know. So he's gone, and that's the end of the story. Yeah, and uh, look, I, I, I'm not look. I'm not disappointed. Everyone knows my opinion of Brad Crouch, the player. Um, you know, and. Take, as far as I'm concerned, take more leaving. Uh, I think I'm quite glad, in many respects, that we've moved on from Brad Crouch because I don't think he was going to deliver on his promise. For, and and part of that was his own fault, but part of that was just sheer bad luck. You know, he had terrible draw, groin issues um, mm-hmm. and related hamstring issues. But then you know you hear that that. Um, in what, during his rehab, he was on the tins all all, all day. You know, and that he wasn't doing, it wasn't a hundred percent on his rehab. So there's all, you know, there's a bit each way on this. And again, that's alleged. Uh, everything's alleged. I'm going to call this the alleged crowcast. I think. But you know, yeah. there, there, a lot of reports that Brad wasn't very diligent on his re- rehab um, and extended his rehab. But you know, that very back yeah. But you know, at, at the end of the day, it was a talented kid that had a, a bit of injury, bad luck. Uh, didn't help himself with some of his life choices, and I don't think he was going to be the answer for it. It's certainly not the mid, the premier midfielder to carry us through to our next premiership window. So I'm quite glad, irrespective of the the economics of it, I'm quite glad that Brad's not on our list anymore. Oh, I reckon we could probably leave that one now. What do you reckon? Let's desert it and move on. All right. So no more Brad Crouch. So we end up with pick 23 which leaves us as it stands with pick one uh, pick one pick nine yeah pick one nine 22 22 and 23 and uh 40 50 66 and 80 all those tricks so in terms of trade week trade week let's we won't talk about pick swaps just yet but in terms of trade week what we have left that we know about is the Jackson Hately situation. So let's talk about that one quickly. All right. Well, if now I'm the list manager for the for the Adelaide Footy Club, right? So I'm handling the trade on the, on behalf of the Adelaide Footy Club. Yep. And uh, you know I'm not making very much contact with GWS at all, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. And they've got big problems on their hand. They've got other players to worry about, and it's four days to go, and we let them burn up as much time as they as they like, and then they come back and say, uh, uh, what are you offering us for, uh, for Jackson? I say, well, uh, hang on, we'll have to, I have to talk to the people, my people about that one. And I'll delay another day, and I come back and near pretty close to the, to the end, and I'm sort of buying time because I also want to see whether anybody of even better stature than him is going to fall into the pre-season draft area. Mm. Um and let's assume then that the day before or the day of, I offer them pick 50. And uh, they'll say, that's not fair. That's nowhere near it. And I'll just say, well, we're offering you pick 50. And we that is the end of the conversation. And if, if the answer is no, 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 we don't have any further conversation. And he goes in the preceding draft and we take him. And the Gold Coast did exactly the same thing to us with Greenwood. So, you know, they, he ended up fourth of their best and fairest. They gave us a bag of chips for him. Um, so uh, one of the advantages of being the bottom team is you do get, have some advantages. 
And if you don't use them, I think you're a fool. And uh, so far, we haven't used our advantages at all. I think we've actually been quite stupid. But um, I just think this is a, a, an opportunity to get a player for nothing. Or if we, weren't, if we are going to give anything, it's almost nothing. Now, I, so I would also say still GWS by saying, look, I'm trying to get in hold of the Bulldogs pick 14, and I'm going to need various uh, uh, assets of my draft picks. I need to give them a combination that uh, makes them happy, and I'm not sure really which ones they are at the moment. So, you know, I'm stalling GWS all the way through until it gets down to the, the wire, and then I'm offering them pick 50, and they can take it or leave it. That's how I would do it. Look, I don't disagree with any of that, Mac. I think um, it's it's time like it's time for this club uh, to be more ruthless. One of the reasons I believe that we're a middle of the road club uh, is that we're just uh, we're too nice. Too we nice. are. We absolutely are. You know, and, I, I, you know, I'm I'm all for fair trading. Uh, I'm all for fair trading. I'm all for win win outcomes. Um, but this is this situation with Jacks Haley is a is a no brainer. And GWS unfortunately are in a position where they're gonna lose a player for not much. And that's the luck of the draw. And the reason that's the luck of the draw is because shit happens and sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And we've been on the losing end of the stick a few times with Dangerfield and whatnot. But in this particular case, even though it's not a terribly big fish, no disrespect to Jackson, um we have a situation where we're, we're uh, you know, a lightly played South Australian player has nominated Adelaide as his club of destination. Uh, we happen to have uh, a lot of tra- uh, pick currency, draft currency, and we've got pole position in the PSD. Now, I wouldn't uh, say, well, stuff your GWS, we're not going to trade with you. We're just going to let him go through the PSD. But I certainly would not be giving Jackson or giving GWS the bloody Atkins compensation pick or whatever they're talking about in the media or pick twenty the the, the Brad Crouch compensation. No, not on not on your life. I and this is where the AFL media make me so mad because on what planet does Jackson Haitley? Yes, he was a late first round pick. But on what planet does Jackson Haightley have any exposed form that that enables us or that, that compels us to spend anything on him when we have uh, become in the PSD? Yeah, you're 100% right. And uh, we, we do have to start toughening up because we have been everybody's bunny and uh, and it's just been proved with St Kilda. St Kilda, um, it's interesting that James Gallagher, who's an ex-crow, he is the man. He's a very astute man too. He's a man that's responsible for that revival in that club. He's a very, very clever man. Yeah. And uh, look, we we put our amateurs out there against him in the background steering his boys, and look, it was no show. We we were always going to lose. Now, so coming back to Hately, and the situation is this: is that I believe that we should be trying to get hold of uh, Bulldogs uh, pick fourteen and. Uh, the picks that I would be giving them is 23 and 40. And in the chat, they said, well, it doesn't quite equate, or, but it does. It's about the same. So it's actually 100 more, I think. But uh, the big thing for them is we won't bid on uh, Oogle Hagen at pick one, which would have cost them 3000 Well, are we going to get done for draft tampering for doing that? Well, the point is I don't think you get done for dra- uh, draft tampering. When there is no rule that says you have to bid on a player. No, there's not. There's no rule. If they, if they had us for that, then they are absolutely insane. And you don't actually even say that to the Bulldogs. You just go do a wink, wink, nod, nod. And the point is that when it comes down there, and you say before the draft, we will not be bidding on uh, Ugal Hagen. And the reason we're not bidding on Ugal Hagen is we, want, we, are, have, we have first pick in the draft. We want our player to be pick one because he gets an extra $15,000 in cash for being pick one. And we don't want to penalise our player just to play bloody bastard with uh, the Western Bulldogs. Now, if you make that particular statement, how can the AFL then have you up for de- for draft tampering? Uh, wow. <laughs> because you're wearing uh, blue, red and yellow, mate. 
Uh, look, I don't disagree with you. I, 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 am, I will be disappointed if we don't make a big play for the Bulldogs' first round pick. Uh, it seems to make sense. They don't need that. They're going to have to spend that pick anyway. Um, they don't need it. Um, so um, trading for um, equivalent value seems a no-brainer to me. I just maybe question um, what their motivation for doing the deal might be because they really don't gain anything out of it. Um, oh, yes, they've got, to, they've got, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to be struggling for points for Eagle Hagen. And if you go and have a look at their draft hand, they've got a very, very weak draft hand. And actually, their points don't even add quite add up to what they need to all their draft picks don't add up to what they need. Right. So they're in, a, they're in a situation that uh, points are the key thing for them. And then if we don't bid on Eagle Hagen and North Melbourne do, they've yeah. still saved 400 points there. Uh, so, and, and then on top of that, we get their pick 14 and we give them something which is about 100 and something points um, more on top of that. So they're about, that gives them about 500 more points. And even if they haven't got enough this year, then they go into debt. Uh, mm. But that's 500 less, they'd have to go into debt. So for them, it's all about points. It's not about draft picks for them. It's all about points. Having said that, the fly in the ointment could well be in the situation with this lad that wants to go to bloody Essendon. Colbert. And in, no, not Paul. Um, oh, um, um, Bulldogs player. Um, very good player. Um, very yeah, good player. Dunkley. 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 Yeah. And now, if they get a first rounder, uh, which they could be pick, pick, uh, what number? Well, it'll be Essendon. Essendon will be, Essendon, Essendon will be, it'll be six or seven. Yeah. I don't know whether that deal will actually happen yet. And if I was if I was the Bulldogs, there's no way I'd be letting Dunkley go because he's he's got two years to go on his contract. And they, the Western Bulldogs have said quite clearly that when a player's got two years to go on their contract, you want to get him. You not only have to pay what he's worth, you've got to pay a premium on top of that mm. because you're depriving the club of two years of his services. So, mm. they to me they they'd be asking two first rounders, and I don't think yes, you know, that's so bloody mean. I don't think they'll cough up. So. I don't know that that trade will actually get get through. It might, it might not, but it could mate. actually foul up our, our. It could foul us up to get pick fourteen. That's the only thing I want to put on the table. Yeah, no, it's likely that it will, mate. It's likely that it will. There's no reason for Western Bulldogs to do that trade if they get a second round one pick. Hmm. Well, that, that that's that, that's one. But let's presume that we do get. Bulldogs pick uh, 14. And then we've got yep. 9 and 14. Yep. I'd be mose- moseying along to Sydney. Uh, I'd be moseying along to North Melbourne. And I'll just say, look, you've got pick 2 or to North Melbourne. 9 and 14 gets you two cracks at the first round. Um, and we'll do that for your pick 2. And, uh, you know, there might be some points adjustment. And I, I'm not going to go into the fine details. But I would be trying to negotiate into picks, either picks 2 or 3. The reason I say that is because that way we could use our first pick for whichever tool we're going to take out of uh, McDonald and Tilthorpe and uh, North Melbourne, say, we'll say we took Sydney's, got Sydney's pick three. Uh, they would take um, the, the other tool that we didn't take because they desperately do need a tool. Yep. Uh, and and we get, then we get Holland at three. Um, but, you know, I thought somebody said they wouldn't do it, but you, but you won't know unless you try. And this so is uh, give me a give me a scenario where um, where we're getting Sydney's pick three, mate. Well, if we say we got pick fourteen off of uh, um, the Bulldogs, and we've got pick nine already, you give that you give off at nine and fourteen for pick three. Um, you still they've got an opportunity to get two. Good players, rather than one good player, and not, and it may they may say no because they've got a, their eye on a particular player, and they probably have. But you, look, Port Adelaide did it very, very well in the two thousand and eighteen draft. They traded this, they traded that, they moved a player out, they got this, they got that, they put it all together, and they they did about three machinations to get into the uh, into the <clears throat> position where they got Rosie. Adelaide didn't do anything to try and get Rosie. Which is we thought we had it done, but Port Adelaide got off their ass and they did combinations 
They yeah. moved players on. Well, they were and lucky. They got. They, they were lucky. They, that were... they found a club in Fremantle that were that were in that position. I'm not sure whether there's a club. the only club that I can see that's in that position is Gold Coast. Gold Coast have come out during the week uh, saying that the uh, the pick five is on the table. Um, yes, uh, but but Sydney also they want two of they've got two academy players that will probably rate in the top ten. Certainly one will. No, no, one will definitely rate in the top ten, and the other one might be. In you reckon, a little bit bad. But, you reckon yeah, Campbell will go little, top 10? Um, I'm not sure which one. I'm, I can't remember their names at the moment, but I did have a look at it, and one of them uh, I'm sure will go in the top 10, and um, the other one will probably be in the 10 to 20 category. So I just think that Sydney may do it and may not do it. But you don't know unless you try. And I think um, I think I, I would love to have Port Adelaide list manager instead of ours because he, I'm sure he'd be able to manage it somehow. Um, yeah. he, I thought he was—he was brilliant in two thousand and eighteen. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, look, Campbell's around the ten mark, and I think there might be an opportunity. What I was trying to get out of you was that particular scenario. I, I think there's an opportunity to work um, on Gold Coast and Sydney, and also to, also to some degree Hawthorne, um, uh, but uh, specifically. Um, Gold Coast and Sydney are the two, along with Western Bulldogs, that we could work a deal with. Um, I just, I wonder, Macca, I wonder how hard we need to go at this draft. Um, I think we need to, well, the thing is, when you do a rebuild, you have to try and rebuild every year. Um, yes. And I, and I know what you're talking about next year is, uh, allegedly a better draft than this year. And that brings me back to, back to my the second part of what my strategy for this year's draft. Mm. I, I, would be, I would be, and I wanted to talk to you about this particular aspect and, ask, and see what you thought of it, is that um, let's say we just only have the draft picks that we have and yep. uh, we, don't, we don't do any trading of draft picks. Yep. Um, at the moment, the AFL have come out and said, uh, they've indicated that the lists will be uh, for uh, no less than 38 players on the main list. Yep. Uh, and it can, I think it can even go up to 40. Yep. Uh, but 38 and up to up to six rookies. So mm-hmm. 38 and six is just let's use as an indicative figure. At the moment, we've got after all the players have gone out, we've got 32 main list players left. Yeah. And that and that thirty two main list players, I promoted Keys from being a rookie to a main list player. That leaves us with six draft picks, which I think sits very nicely. But where does that leave uh Gallucci, McKay, uh, uh, Crocker, and who's the other one? Um uh, the other one no. is um Paholke. Yeah, Paholke. Right, so let's deal with those four first. Mm. For me, Paholke has proven he doesn't do things wrong and he's got good hands, but he's slow. And as you know, as you can see, let's he's short gone. circuit that. Yeah. Let's short circuit this conversation because I think it's very easy. The only one that stands half a chance, in my view, is Gallucci, and that's very much on potential. I, well, I I'm happy to he... keep Crocker. I'm happy to keep Crocker on the rookie list. Well, I, I would he, keep. He is a rookie. He's a rookie now. Yeah, I, I'm happy to keep Crocker if we've got room, but I'm saying Jordan Gallucci is last man out in my, in well, my view. Well, D, yes, D I Mac, it. D, it really concerns me that, that we haven't heard uh, David McKay retirement because David McKay is just not part of our future and with contracting um, list sizes, we just, we just don't have the room for D Mac, you know. Yes, he had arguably his best year for some time uh, this year. Um, but he plays in a role that we've got an abundance of young kids. He can't he can't be taking a first 22 spot in a rebuild, David McKay. And there's no purpose in Sir by keeping him on the list as backup. We've got plenty of backup at halfback, right? And it just concerns me that Again, we've got this situation like Scotty Thompson before him and a few others where we just hang on to these players 
for no particular reason other than loyalty to the player. You know, this is a business. And DMAX well, had DMAX had very good benefit, very uh, very good benefit from the AFL industry over the years. Um, a far better benefit than some equivalent in talent uh, to David. And all credit to him for making the most of his opportunities and being able to stay on the list. Um, but I think it, surely his time's now come. Well, I'm with you. Um, Paholke gone, McKay gone, uh, Crocker maybe is a rookie, but um, I'll sort of contradict that with an argument I'm about to present to you. Um, and basically, Galucci would be the only one that I'd say for certain I would keep because there is potential there. We gave another one year to have a crack at it, see if we can get it out of it. If not, well, then, then he goes. Um, so that, that would mean then we would have 33 on our list and we could go up to 30. Eight, maybe thirty-nine. Um, so let's say we go to, go to thirty-nine. That leaves us with six picks, which means one would be for the pre-season draft for me, and five is going to be five young players we're going to bring into the club. One yep. of those is obviously going to be a tall. The other one yep. is going to be uh, mid, and I would say that then leaves us with a situation of three picks left. Yep. Are you going to use those? On Borlase, yes, I'm going to definitely use one on Borlase. Yes. So, are you going to use it on New Church? No. Only. Uh, are you going to use it on Edwards? I'm going to say no. Well, I oh, well the jury's out on whether he'll nominate. Yes. Um, and so, I think the reason I but just to let me finish that. I don't think I think there's a bit of hesitance in the um, Edwards camp, but I don't think there's also been a towering interest from the Crows, um, and I think I think Jackson will actually uh, Luke Edwards will actually um, nominate for the draft. I don't think he'll nominate Adelaide. And do you think he'll get picked up, or do you think he'll be a rookie? It's difficult to say. I mean, he's got he's got some ability. He just looks a little cumbersome to me. Um, and a little bit slow. Um, so he might hit a rookie list somewhere, but I I'd, I'd look, I'd, wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. No, so basically what I'm saying is that I would be going to, uh, I'd have six picks uh, up my sleeve. I'd keep the Lucci and have six, up, six picks up my sleeve. Yeah. Uh, and I would go heavily in the rookie area, Fiend, and there's a reason for saying that. Uh, because of the fact of the fact that the Victorian players didn't really get to play this year. Mm, mm. Yeah, I'd pick up maybe one or two of the local lads. I mean, I, I really like uh, Caleb Poulter. I don't know whether he's going to go in the draft or not, but I'd certainly like to rookie him if he's not. Um, no, no, he'll be in the draft. Yeah, but do you think he'll go in the draft? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I like him. I think I think he's got a future, um, and he might be one of the ones that we take. But... Um, what I'm really saying is, I, my my uh, five picks. I mean, the ones for the PSD and five live picks. I'm taking a ruckman and I'm taking the best mid, and then after that, I've definitely got a uh, ballays in, and then I'm after the or oh, maybe before before ballays. I'm after another mid. I want an outside mid. I want an inside mid, and I want the best ones available that you can get. Obviously. Well, you've got two um, South Australian lads that are going to fill that role. Uh, one is uh, Colour Poulter. You mentioned the other is Tim Power. Tim Power is a ball magnet. He works inside. He's uh, very skillful. Uh, he's uh, he would be and he played all year. Played a few yep. league games well, for cert. Yep, and then ball age, and then there maybe will be um, New Church. I would only then take Sorry, if Patrick he was right Tom. near. The, uh, New Church only take me right near the tail end, but I, 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 that, didn't, I didn't like New Church. If anyone hasn't seen the um, the uh, SA Combine game, um, yeah, I want to watch that. Yeah, yeah. If anyone hasn't seen it or they want to watch it again, I've actually post I've uploaded it onto the Crowcast YouTube channel, so you can watch it uh, in its entirety on the YouTube channel, on the uh, Crowcast YouTube channel. It's very interesting, and New Church didn't impress me at all in that game, Mac. He did some tricky little things and some nice things, but he's like he's very flashy and uh, and he just 
in and out. He didn't. No, he didn't play a consistent game. No doubt about that. The guy that really starred in that, absolutely starred, that was um, with his big long flowing mullet, was Caleb Polder. I, I, he, yeah. He's a beautiful left foot kick, and I must admit, he looked a class above him, really, didn't he? Well, um, I mean, he's yeah, he, um, he 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 he's been on my radar for a while. Power's been on my radar for a while. I think the advantage, and and I've got to admit, Matt, there two of the reasons why I've been quite happy to go to go light in this draft because they are quality midfielders that are available to us mid-draft um, you know we may not get them, they may go to other clubs obviously but um, uh, that's why I, I'm struggling to see the benefit in, in going as hard in this draft when maybe we should be using some of that currency into next year which will be a lot more difficult but um, a lot more beneficial I think if we can swing it yeah, well, I don't think you're going to be able to swing too much into next year's draft because people are trying to hold, will try and hold them as much as they can themselves. So, to say that you can't do that, um, I, I think that um, we picked up a certain number of young lads last year, and uh, they're going to take this year to still grow, and hopefully, uh, one or two of them may uh, come into the side this this year. It's Worrell, for example, um, but I think we've got to, we've got to take four or five, I'm saying five. And in the, in the rookie side of things, there's a lot of unplayed Victorians who are going to be pretty classy and will be missed along the lines. And they're the ones I would, take a, I would take a punt on those as a rookie. I'd be looking, getting, trying to grab about four of them. So Patrick that on, would be my, Patrick my draft on YouTube, um Patrick on YouTube mentions uh, uh, Nathan O'Driscoll. I really like him, and he's good. I re- he's good. I reckon what we might end up doing if we don't get too cute with picks, I reckon that he would be uh, our number. Well, it was seven, whatever it is now, uh, nine. I, I reckon he'll go uh, to the Crows, which a, a lot of people will say that's a little bit higher than what he would go. Um, but I, I really like him uh, at. My, my personal view is this, Macca. I think now that we don't have pick two and the luxury of getting uh, a tall plus Hollands, I think the Crow and I'll be interested in your thoughts here, I think the Crows have a very big decision to make on whether they take one of the two premier key position forwards in the draft in Tilthorpe or Logan McDonald or whether they take arguably the best talent in the draft if you read all reports in uh, Young Holland Big question uh, isn't it? Because well, well just to let me finish that that point, I'm of the view the, I'm of the view the, everything that I've seen of Logan McDonald points to me as he is a modern day forward. He's not big and lumbering uh, he's got fantastic endurance he's not an exceptional contested mark but I want you to go back and have a look at contested mark numbers in the forward line in forward 50 over the last five years I've had a look and contested marks in the forward 50 although they look great when someone clunks a big mark in the forward 50 they've been on the decline macker contested most goals these days come from leads or ground ball in the forward line you might get one or two marks out of a contested situation, but most scores come from lead-ups, uncontested, well, not uncontested, but lead-ups or ground ball. Logan McDonald, to me, represents a, a bloke who can run all day, uh, similar to Nick Revolt, and his the benefit of, of him will be being able to get to so many contests um, I would be, uh, to me, he's a he's a generational forward um, over Riley Tilthorpe, who I think will be an excellent but more traditional forward. I could be wrong, but I've seen a little bit of Riley. Um, and Riley also has the benefit of being able to ruck as well. Uh, but we have Elliot Himmelberg for that. Um, uh, young Holland is a potential midfielder certainly a, 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 um, a 
high caliber forward um has had an ACL, so you'd think he'd struggle to get much on the park next year. Of the two, my, it's a long-winded answer, but I'll finish it up by saying of the two of them, I think you just can't go by Logan McDonald at one, and I think as a result we might go O'Driscoll at seven, nine, whatever it is. Nine. Um, well, I think I think you might be on the money. Um, what's the name of the bloke that? Um... He's very, very good at classifying uh, draft picks and he puts it up on Twitter all the time what his order of selection is, etc. Uh, Cal uh, Toomey. No, not Toomey. Um, well, I don't know. There's a few there. He, he, started, he, started, he started off in big footy. Um, he started off oh, in big footy. Is the, yeah. Anyway, go on. And now, but, now, but anyhow, he, he, was, he was tweeting away today what, uh, about the dangers in picking key forwards mm. and number one and number two positions, and, yeah. and he and he went through, went through the history of them, and he said that he went through where he picked them at and where he went where the play, where the clubs picked them at, and he quite nightmare. That's it. Thank you, nightmare. Um, and, he, and he is pretty good. He is pretty good. He does he does a real analysis of the players, and yeah, he's good for Victorians. Yeah, he, good for Victorian kids. Well, he went through, you know, anyway, uh, the on. last 10 years. And the point he was making was that, in general, they're failures. Not failures, but they don't... Yeah, Chris Story is the real name. Um, and if you look back, he, he's right. But same man is saying, however, if Adelaide fall for taking uh, two thoughts, they've got it wrong. They, he's saying that McDonald is a once-in-a-generation player. He well, is that's, one... that's exactly what I think. Yeah, he's saying he is the one forward that he would take at number one because he said he... And every club that... If they don't take him, they will regret it. Yes. And and... So he, he's just in your camp, Fiend, and uh, he gives a very, very strong argument why. And... Now, that means we miss out on Holland's because we really do need midfielders, but there are some very good midfielders around in this, in this particular draft. Well, so, there's Will Phillips, Hannah well, Bruin, uh, Nathan O'Driscoll, there's a couple of others. Um, you know, and uh, as I said, there's a couple of mids, uh, mid-draft from South Australia that we might be able to get our hands on. Um, I think a, f- a forward line consisting of uh, Logan McDonald and Elliot Himmelberg, if his trajectory continues, is a very, very damaging forward line because the Berg has good wheels as well. The Berg has excellent endurance and he can ruck. Um, And having those two in there with a couple of smalls and a Shane McAdam flying around and maybe a Darcy Fogarty if he ever gets fit, it's a very, very good forward line. And it's a forward line as good, if not better, than we've ever had, potentially, Maka, potentially. Now, you have a look at the way the game of football is played at the moment. It's, it's, there's not a huge amount of clean entry into forward 50, like I said. Uh, but Logan is excellent at, at ground level. Um, he's strong in the lead. He's got excellent endurance. He's not, he's not a contested marking forward. Um, but he's a very accurate kick as well. I, it just it just looks to me as a strong, powerful 60-goal-a-year forward, and uh, I, I just don't think we can go past him. I really don't. Well, oh yeah, I'm, I'm certainly being converted into the same camp as you. I, and that's why I was so hoping we would get one and two, because if we got him and Holland, I would say you know, our draft is already made at that stage. Um but um, now we de- now we have to make a selection of best tall, yeah. best small, yeah. and uh, you could. There's a very strong argument to say we really need the best small, uh, you know, the best mid because we've lost uh, potentially our best mid in Brad, and he's certainly if he's not our best, he's very, very close to, to it. Uh, so we're going to be very weak in the midfield, and so we going we need a very good mid. But I do think there are. A couple of other mids. Uh, it's a little bit like the Walsh situation, really. I and I don't know about Holland's compared to Walsh, but um, Walsh was supposed to be the best best mid. But there's other mids that are out there that are outperforming Walsh, in my opinion, anyhow. That came later on down in the draft. So Holland's may not be the be all and all, uh, well, the be all arts to everything. 
the, 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 the Walsh equivalent in this draft is Will Phillips. He's an accumulator. And look, Sammy Walsh will have an excellent 250 game career uh, because he'll never stop getting the ball. And Correct. There's, val- there's value in that. There's value in some bloke who will get 25, 30 quality touches every week. The problem with Brad Crouch was he got 25, 30 touches, but they weren't quality. Whereas you get more quality from a bloke like Sam Walsh. Uh, will Phillips is much the same. Um, but the thing is, with our second pick at number nine, Matt, there's going to be two or three midfielders around that are going to be worthy of that pick. And uh, my money's on Nathan O'Driscoll, uh, but it could easily be Tanner Bruin. It could easily be one of the others. Um, you know. Uh, well, I'm in the same camp as you. I think that's probably how we should go. And yeah. I do definitely want to get four A's in. Four A's is... But we, we don't really need much in defence, but Thorlace gives us that one situation where uh, Tully is not going to last forever, so we do need another tool down there. Hardigan's gone, um, so we do need another tool down, well, down back. Well, the, I think the key indicator that we're going to pick Thorlace up is the fact that we let Hardigan go. Um, it, 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 it absolutely yields it out, doesn't it? So yeah, I, he's definitely you know, having only one. Would you... Um, would you consider how high would you consider uh, Caleb Polder if you were if you were drafting? Look, I really struggle to see if it gets to our um, gets to our uh, first second rounder. I would, I would, al- I would almost be willing to take if we had Bulldogs fourteen, which would be sixteen or whatever the heck it'll be. I would be quite happy for the Crows to pick Polder up at sixteen. Uh, 14, yeah. Uh, 14. Well, I think, I, that's I, would overs. I think that's overs, but I don't think Porter gets to 20. And I think we need to, I think we need to snaffle him. Homegrown talent, I think we need to snaffle him. Yeah, so that's basically how I've looked at it. Uh, that I, I want us to take uh, five picks, um, one pre season draft, which is. Uh, Hately, obviously, yeah. um, and I want us to load up in the uh, rookie list with untried Victorians. Yeah, so we're, we're thinking here. we're thinking McDonald at one. Let's yep. say O'Driscoll with our second pick. Let's say yep. Poulter with our third pick. Let's yep. say Powell with our fourth pick. Let's say Borlace with our NGA. Yeah, and Hate and yep. Hately Hately with a either a late or a or a. PSD or whatever happens there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that fits with my with my pick fifty. <laughs> so, yep. yep. Um, so uh, that's why I would only offer pick fifty because yep. want to use the first five picks and uh, and and uh, very much along the lines that you're talking about. If we had if we netted those players in in the draft, I'd be very happy. And as I said, uh, load up the few Victorians in the uh, rookie list that haven't played this year. Um, and I think we could probably uh, improve our side quite dramatically. All right. I just want to finish off this cast with one more discussion um, because the other, the other issue that the List Management Committee face, uh, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit more next week, but I'll just uh, open up the discussion. At the moment, um, we have Daniel Talia, Tom Lynch, Matt Crouch and Rory Laird all becoming free agents, uh, restricted free agents in 2021. And we also have um, Brody Smith becoming an unrestricted free agent in 2021. And also Taylor Walker, oh, that doesn't matter. Tex will be retired, hopefully. So we've got, we've got five players... One, two, three, four, five, six players coming into free agency next year. Next year, yep. Macca. And yep. I'm just wondering, I'm looking at two names to try and get um, to try and get up the draft. Uh, and you're talking about uh, Sydney and Hawthorne and uh, Gold Coast, maybe. Brody Smith and Rory Laird. Brody Smith is one I would be trading. Let's not forget that they've got to agree. 
Yeah, I understand that. And they, they, they may will say no. Um, but uh, I would be happy. I would, I would trade Laird too. Although Laird was a bit of a revelation in the midfield and did give us a little bit of grunt there. And we've already lost a midfielder. So um, I wouldn't want to make us too bare there. But Brodie Smith, I, I think, is replaceable. Absolutely replaceable. Well, of course so, he's uh, replaceable. We've got Lockie Shaw, Will Hamill, Tom Doty, uh, uh, McPherson, a couple of other blokes who can play off half-back coming through. Brody Smith, uh, you know, has been a great servant for the club, um, but he is prone to go missing in big moments. I, I honestly think the club that I think would be interested in Brody Smith is Hawthorne. Well, they've got a very nice uh, pick there. We could actually do a pick swap there. And uh, Sydney would up, be the but... other one. Yes. So I would be de- definitely hawking Brody Smith around and... Uh, uh, but only, only if we got what we wanted. I mean, you're, you're not going to give them away. But it, but well, well, I Matt, think the, that the thing is, we may not have a choice next year, and this is why I'm wondering and that, about and that's, getting value. And I, 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 th- I think that's the case with every player that is uh, due uh, to become a free agent at the end of the season of the year before free agency. Yeah, well, particularly think, unrestricted you, free agency. Where you don't get yeah, a compensation. It, yeah, you should have a real talk to them about it, and if they won't commit further on, and you and you want them to keep them, and they won't commit further on, then trade them. I think you just got to do that. Yeah. Well, Brody Smith, uh, as I said, unrestricted free agent in twenty one, uh, hasn't agreed to a new deal. Um, you know, he's twenty eight. I'm sure he'd love to play in a successful side, a, a premiership side. Um, I can think of a few clubs, uh, even the Western Bulldogs, I think, would be interested in Brodie Smith. Um, I'm quite comfortable in uh, in putting him on the trade table. I'm actually surprised that he hasn't been put on the trade tables yet, to be honest with you. I agree. I'm, surp- Absolutely. I'm surprised that, it, you know, a lot of clubs might be holding up, looking at his status next year and thinking they can get him for nothing. Um but uh, I, I think I, I think he, he's the one I'd be thinking about very seriously. Rory Laird, <clears throat> he did have a very good second half of the year, Mac. Um, he's 26, so he's in his prime. He's already played, you know, a good number of games, 150 games. Um, you know, he's he's an ex-All Australian. I, well, so is Smithers for that matter. I'm a little less inclined to get rid of Lairdy. Uh, because I think he actually showed um, some real ability in the midfield and he's in the right age bracket. We don't have a lot in that 24 to 26 age bracket. Um, and so I'm, I'm less inclined to uh, look at trading Lady. I'd, I'd be really gunning hard to re-sign Rory Laird, actually. Um, the other one that I'd be thinking about trading is Matt Crouch for the right money. Ooh, you know, well, if you did that, you'd be certainly you'd be wrecking your midfield for a while. Um, but uh, you know, so be it if you do. But you'd want something of real value for it because Matt, Matty is uh, of the two crouches. Matty is the one that we had to keep, and uh, if we get rid of Matty, well, you really, really want a very good deal. I don't want to trade Crouch, Matt Matty Crouch. I want to keep him. Um, no, but I would be very, I'd be very happy to trade Brody, Brody Smith. Yeah, I, look, Laird and Crouch absolutely would have to be um, a, a pick in the top dozen to 15, I would say, uh, for you to contemplate it. I don't think anything outside 15 gets you Rory Laird or or Matt Crouch. Um, I think a pick 10 to 18 gets you Brody Smith. Um but uh, and I wouldn't certainly be getting rid of both Crouch and Laird. I agree with you. No. Um, Crouch at only twenty five. Um, the the only my only knock on Crouch and the reason why I'd consider getting rid of him, uh, Mac, is for the same reason that uh, Brad had trouble. He he does have a, a few durability issues, and he does lack pace. Um, and every time he does that hamstring, he just gets that little bit slower. And it's one of those situations where. You know, maybe he's at the top of his value at the moment, and uh, maybe it's worthwhile 
cashing in? Uh, well, you know, he's, well, you'll say it, it's true that, he, that he, he's not a quick player, but he's an excellent player at reading where the ball is going to be and where it's going to go. So um, he he's like a pace. He just makes up that with his just sheer football nous. And, uh, and, and he was a bit of a problem at the beginning of the year because he's he had with his brother and uh, also going backwards all the time. But uh, the coach got hold of him and uh, dropped him for a game. And then uh, when he came back, he played it the way the, 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 coach, uh, the coach wanted. And I thought he was really dynamic in the last part of the year. So I don't really want to let him go at all. Yeah. It'll be an interesting situation uh, this time next year, Mac. Um, a lot to play out and... Uh, you know, a few. It, you know, I think it'll tell during the off season in the first couple of months of next year how many of those free agents plan on sticking around because uh, um, we may not have any choice in losing those players uh, in the end. And I'd rather, particularly with Brody Smith, um, I'd rather get value for him than just see him walk as an unrestricted free agent um, at the end of twenty one. All well, right, mate. Absolutely. Well. I think we've just probably about done enough. Well, we have, and uh, I reckon that uh, it's that we've got four days of trade to come up, uh, so there's going to be plenty to talk about next week. Uh, also, by the end of next week, we're going to know the draft picks uh, absolutely as they stand, whether, whether we have traded. So I think if we're going to do any trading up situa- uh, situation uh, to try and get higher up in the order, that will happen in the next four days. Mm. It's, you, you can't really do that in the first round while the first round is happening. So, yeah. um, so we, I guess, we'll have a very good idea of the number of players that we go, we're likely to take at the draft and what order we've got. And on top of that, I think by uh, after trade week, I think we'll have a very good idea what's going to happen to those four boys that are sitting out there. Yes, and I think, I think we're going to be right, and I think that. The only one you'd probably guarantee that might get in is Gallucci, I think. And because but because you're looking at potential. McKay, I feel really sad about because I thought he had his best year this year. Um, and well, uh, I don't disagree on that one, Mac. I really don't. Um, but, geez, you know, with uh, the list size situation and with the, the with where we are in our absolutely. cycle. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah, so we're going to have a lot to talk about next week. So uh, to the people out there in the chat, you know, thank you for your contribution and thanks for your help when I forget bloody names. I do appreciate that. Yeah, um, now, look, but, thanks, Fadi and J-Mac and uh, 9090 and Surfoz and uh, everyone, Patrick, on YouTube and everyone who's joined us on Facebook as well. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can... Uh, you can... Uh, become a Patreon if you like patreon.com forward slash AFL Crowcast um, or, and make sure you join our Discord channel um, I've been getting on there a little bit uh, and having a chat during the week during the trade week So and others have been getting on there too so if you want to have a chat during the day uh, during the trade period um, get on Discord and uh, for those who've been listening on Facebook and YouTube um keep an eye out because I'll be uploading the first bit that I cut off um, so you can hear our rant about how stupid the club was. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, make sure you're back. Yeah, they make sure they're back next week because I think we'll have lots to talk about. We will. All right. Until then, everyone stay safe, keep smiling, and we'll see you next Sunday. Yeah. Good night, all. <laughs>